Welcome grade 10s to this lesson on measures of central tendency of group data. Remember that measures of central tendency are the mean, median and mode. Now let's cross over to Geke and Gerard who are analyzing the ages of 126 children living in a children's home. Gerard will be joining us from the comfort of his own home. Hi Gerard. Hi everyone. In data handling, you're likely to come across many situations where you've collected data and need to know what the average of that data is. You'll remember that there are three types of averages we can work with. First is the mean. This is an average that's calculated by adding up all the data and then dividing the total by the number of values you have. The answer will be the mean. The median is the number that falls exactly in the middle of the data when it's organized from the largest to the smallest. And the mode is the value that occurs in your data most often. Those were the measures of central tendency we used for ungrouped data. But how do you think we can find the mean, median and mode of grouped data? Let's use the children's ages from the children's home again and start with the mean. Here's the frequency table for this data. It shows the class intervals and the number of children in each class. To find the mean of grouped data, we use the midpoint of each class. Now, this midpoint gives us an estimate of the mean. I don't get it. Why is it only an estimate? Well, to be more accurate, we could have used all the numbers in your data to find the mean, but that's not necessary. The midpoint of each class is the fairest number that represents all the numbers in the class. The mean of the midpoint of each class is accurate enough. So the midpoint of the first class will be halfway between 0 and 4, and that's 2. Right. And the other midpoints will be 6, 10, 14 and 18. Okay, so where to from here? Well, there are 126 children all together. So we take the midpoint of each class, multiply it by the frequency in that class, and then get the mean by dividing by 126. But first, we need to add a column to the table where we can work out the midpoint times the frequency. And we also need to add a row for the totals and fill in the total frequency, which is 126. So, this is what our table looks like. Okay, Gerard, I'll let you do the calculations. Cool. 21 times 2 is 42. And the next is 96. Then 260, 616, and 342. And if we add all those together, we get... 1,356. So, the mean average age of the children is 1,356 divided by the number of children, which is 126. That's 10,76 years. So, let's round it off to 10,8 years. So, if there were 126 children who were all 10,76 years old, the total of their ages would be 1,356. Now, what about the median? Well, we know that the median is the middle number of a set of data that's arranged from the smallest to the biggest. So, the middle two numbers of 126 will be the 63rd number and the 64th number. Does that mean we have to count all the ages? That will take forever. No. Again, we use the groups of data to find the median. What we will find is the class that the median is in, and that will be accurate enough. Look at these frequencies. The median won't be in the first class which has 21 children in it. And by the end of the second class, we've counted 21 plus 16 children. That's 37. So the median isn't in that class either. But if we add the frequency from the third class to this, we get 37 plus 26. That's 63. So, the 63rd number is in the third class, and the 64th number will be in the fourth class. That's the age groups from 8 to 12, and from 12 to 16 years old. Right, so we can say that the median is between these two class intervals. We now know that the median must be 12. 
the median tells us that approximately half the children are younger than 12 and approximately half are older than 12. We don't always get such an accurate answer because the median often lies within one class interval. That's a bit different from the mean, which is about 10,8. So what about the mode? The mode of a set of data is the value with the highest frequency. So we have to find which class has the highest frequency, not one specific value. This is called the modal class. That's easy. Most of the children are in the 12 to 16 year old group. That puts them in the modal class. Right. So far, we've only looked at the frequency table of this data. I did this so that you can understand the concept of finding the measures of central tendency of grouped data. But sometimes it seems quite hard to see what the data is telling us when it's in a table like this. So let's have a look at the histogram we drew of this data. How would you use the histogram to find the mean of the data? Isn't it the same as what we did with the frequency table? Yes, it is. You need the midpoint of each class. But you might find it easier to find the midpoints on the graph than you did on the table. On the first bar, the midpoint is 2. And the others will be 6, 10, 14, and 18. I see what you mean. They're much easier to see on the graph. And I can also see what to do. I take the midpoint of each class and multiply the frequency of that class. The length of the bars show me the frequency. That's it. And that's exactly what we did with the frequency tables. So the first frequency is 21 and 21 times 2 is 42. And finally, you should end up with the same values as we did on the frequency table. Then, you multiply them together, find the total, and divide them by the number of children, which is 126. You can check this yourself. You should find a mean of 10,76 years. So let's round it off to 10,8 years. But what about finding the median from the histogram? The median is the middle number, the value halfway between the 63rd and the 64th numbers. You can add up the frequencies shown on the bars until you get to those numbers. Just as with a table, if you add the first three classes, you get 21 plus 16 plus 26, which gives you 63. So the 63rd number will be in the third class and the 64th number will be in the 4th class. Again, that's from 8 to 12 and from 12 to 16 years old. The modal class is the class with the highest frequency and from the graph, it's easy to see. It's the longest bar here, the 4th class, with a frequency of 44. It's much easier to see. I think I prefer using the graph for the modal class, but for the mean, I think I'll stick to frequency tables. We have been shown how to calculate the mean, median, and mode for grouped data in a different way to ungrouped data. Sometimes mean is written in a mathematical formula. Let's have a look at that formula. The mean x bar for grouped data is equal to the sum of all the frequencies f multiplied by x, which represents the midpoint of each interval, divided by the total frequency n. The sigma sign indicates that we are looking for the sum of something. Remember that because we are working with the midpoints x of each interval and not the actual values, the mean of group data is an estimate of the actual mean. For more practice in this, look at the tasks for this section in the Discovering Statistics task video. You'll also be able to learn about statistics on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Keep working at it so your marks won't be mean. You know what I mean? <laughs>